Hi, I'm Chris Urquhart, publisher of Natural Awakenings Magazine, and I'm here today with Kumari Mullen. Kumari is an internationally acclaimed spiritual teacher, intuitive coach, Reiki master, and best-selling author. Thank you so much for joining us today, Kumari. Thanks, Chris, for hosting me. We go back quite a ways, so it was nice to catch up with you and share some of our uh, insights together. <laughs> yes, yes, we're having a good time. Yeah. So just to kind of kick it off, uh, how did you get into energy medicine? Was this something that was always an interest of yours or a light shift or how'd you get into it? It was pretty dramatic, actually. I had no clue any of this existed. I was on a completely different track as a, an attorney. And um, I worked at Legal Aid, so I was one of the good guys, but still, I was an attorney. <laughs> and it feels like another lifetime now to say that. And my father got very ill very suddenly. And he died within a, a few months of lung cancer. And I remember not being able to articulate the, the feeling, but sitting there watching him die and doing little things. You know, I just thought, there's got to be more that I can offer somebody in that situation, somebody I love. And so it was like this burning desire to do more. I don't know how else to describe it. But I had no idea if that was even possible or what that even meant at the time. Right after that, um, I, I was introduced to a spiritual teacher from India. I didn't know from gurus and chanting and meditation and all these things were totally new. So no, energy medicine was not. It was, I came from a traditional Western medicine. Uh, it was seen as completely flaky and woo-woo and out there. And so it was not even in my, um, my bandwidth to consider. And so in that uh, spiritual community, or I was just learning to meditate, I noticed that I had energy, something was happening to my hands, and I, if I placed them on somebody, they were feeling better. Headaches were disappearing. And I thought, I have no idea what I'm doing. I better find out, because I had this idea that I'm taking their pain, and you know, if I'm a good person, like a good Catholic girl that I was, I'll take their pain and then I'll suffer. That I knew was not gonna be very, very much fun or very sustainable. So somebody came through that community and said they're they're a Reiki master and they're teaching this. And I just said, sign me up. I had no clue what it was. I had never had it. Uh, as a matter of fact, the only time I heard about it was another attorney mentioned she had a tree. I was telling her that she wasn't being very logical when she described different sensations where they weren't even touching her, but she was feeling blockages in the throat. And I said, yep, you should have told her to stop pressing on your throat. She's like, <laughs> I mean, I was so rational minded, you know, and she's like, but they weren't touching me. And I'm like, yeah, that makes no sense. And I, and I remember thinking that that's not logical, which is how I was brought up, you know, science minds and my dad and everything. And all of a sudden I'm saying yes to these things because something, you know, they say when one door shuts, another one opens. Well, this door opened into understanding debt and suffering and and healing and how to help somebody and how to give more in those times. And I have to say, I worked in an AIDS hospice for a long time and I don't think I've seen suffering like that. These days I'm starting to feel like it's this a similar way where people are separated from their families and struggling alone. That was happening in our hospice. And I, I just felt like, wow, you know, how do you, how do you manage all this? And I found that with Reiki, even though people still end up going through illness processes or they don't always heal the body, I always feel like I'm giving my best. I always feel like that feeling I had with my dad, I've never had that again, where I'm not doing enough, where I'm not giving. I feel like something, that Reiki that is flowing through me, which means universal life force, we tap into through the to the system of the way it's being taught from Dr. Yusui from Japan, he's helping us tap into opening up our channels to more life force, which is flowing through everything anyway, but it's allowing us to be more of a vehicle or more of a channel for that in any given moment. And so when that happens, when that life force is getting pulled from me, because I don't direct it, it's not my, my energy, but when somebody is drawing that in, there's a feeling of 
I'm doing the best I can. Like this is the best I have to offer. And so even though people are suffering, I always feel like there's something I can do. And I can't tell you the piece that that has brought me in the last 30 years, you know, from feeling really helpless, which is a terrible feeling when somebody's <laughs> suffering that you love to feeling like I always have this highest and best offering, even if it doesn't always bring the results I would love. <laughs> I feel like I'm in that offering of highest and best. And um, so, yeah. so Reiki kind of drew you in is, is, and, but you felt like you were already accessing um, energy you know, in sense, but um, yeah, but I had no clue to do Reiki though. It does is anybody can do it or, and how does and anybody can learn it, but it's not from like, like a book or, a, uh, you, you know, it's, um, the way Dr. Yusui taught, it was from a transmission from a teacher to students. So there's a, a certain, uh, initiation process, which is very spiritual in nature, not religious, but spiritual in that it's an energy exchange from one that opens up the other on these more etheric energetic levels or opens up the chakras to flow more um, source energy or light, uh, light, love light, I like to call it, universal life force. So everyone can do it, which is the other reason I loved it. And yeah, I just, I went full tilt boogie because in that first Reiki class, um, even though I felt like I was done, everybody else was tingle, tingle, tingle with their hands and I felt nothing. Right. No tingling. I was a tingling dud. But it's a very, <laughs> I know, I tell this story because clients think that, oh, if they don't see energy, if they don't, send, you know, our intuition comes in many ways, you know. We have strong suits and we have um, ways that it works. We have to just start recognizing it, but it comes differently. So I wasn't tingling. Everyone else in the class was tingling. But at the very end, I knew, I heard, kind of heard a voice, if you will, not an outside voice, but an inner knowing, oh, it's time to move to the next hand position. And I just learned to follow my hands and my inner voice. And so that, that's called direct knowing. I didn't know that at the time. So I wasn't getting the outer sim, uh, significance of the tingle tingle or the heat, you know, that people had a lot of dramatic things happening. So it's different for everybody. And I love it. I love it that it, everyone can learn that. You know? It's accessible to everyone. It's not a belief-based thing. It helps if you don't block it, but you don't have to believe in something like me. I never experienced it, but I was open. I just, it didn't, it didn't speak to my rational mind because I had no concepts for it at that time, but we're talking 33 years ago. So <laughs> it's a yeah, long time ago. I did a lot since then. Yeah. When I first heard about it was probably 20 years ago. And I remember thinking, what the heck at the time? Yeah. Yeah. Down in South, they'd all say, Reiki, you do that Reiki? <laughs> a Reiki buddy? Yeah, what is that? <laughs> yeah, but it's a great tool to have. You know, you can do it for yourself. You can do it for It's in incredible for self-healing, for personal growth and spiritual work. Um, at one point, my Reiki master said, I think Reiki is my guru. <laughs> it's my teaching. It, it's a full teaching. You know, you can really, there's no depth to it. It's unlimited how you how you play with universal life force is unlimited, you know? How can it be anything but? Because it's not my personal energy. You know, it's, it's me hooking up to that source flow or that God energy, whatever you want to call it, that I believe Jesus and the, uh, all kinds of other sages and saints throughout the years were finding a way to tap this same ability. That makes perfect sense to me. So as, as someone who um, wants to help like, like you do and embraces community, you found a way to um, bring people together. Do you want to share a little bit about your, um, your most recent community kind of project you have? Oh, well, um, last week when you shared, we were doing a, a free global healing, which I resurrected. I used to do them a while and I thought, wow, people need holding the panic energy is really strong in everybody's space, that fear. And it was in my space as well. So um, from there, I added a um, live weekly healing component. I've been sending distant weekly healing to my tribe. Um, my community is called Awakening Healers Collective. And we meet once a month by this uh, Zoom video. And I've invited my senior healers in and they, we all share techniques clear our energy, to set our space, to get our mind quiet, meditative and energy alchemy techniques. 
and uh, intuitive reading and for the month. And then um, we meditate or do something together or chat about what's going on energetically. And so it's very, very, very supportive. And I added uh, about a year ago, a distant weekly healing. I had done that separately for 97 bucks a month for many years. Um, I would work with small groups and I said, you know what, I'm giving my community all of this. So I really want there to be that one place where everybody can get it uh, very affordably. So recently, this past week, I said, you know, we need this touch. We're all isolated. I'm going to add a live call, get over myself and do my hair again. Because <laughs> I've been working from home for years, as we talked about. I, I moved uh, my business to online and distant. In Reiki 2, you learn how to send distant energy. So I really just started expanding that many, many years ago and, and then brought it online. So I've been working on the telephone or on Zoom for forever. And I added a live component to our weekly healing. So whoever can gather at that time, um, in present time, we are sending healing to ourselves, to each other, and to the planet. And it's really, really powerful. Because um, I'm not letting anybody just sit there and receive anymore. I'm, really calling on everyone has something to give. This is what I didn't know with my dad. Everybody can go into their heart space and send more love. That is an energy and it's, it's the healing vibration. Um, we just, I didn't know that, you know, it took me, but whenever I would ask, what is this Reiki healing? What is flowing through me? I would feel it. I would see it doing these magical miracle healings. And I'd be like, what is that? Universal life force was, what I was told, but that's heady. You know, I, I didn't, how do you understand universal life force? I couldn't. So I was saying, what is this that's flowing through me and doing this healing? Who is doing this healing? I know it's not me. Mm -hmm. And all I ever got was the answer of love. Yeah. And now we know, as they're measuring different vibrations with these beautiful vibration machines, that love is always the highest of frequencies. You know, this unconditional love. So I do believe that's the force in the universal life force that does the healing. And everybody can add love and light to the planet. So I'm not letting anyone off the hook anymore. I am empowering everybody to do their piece. And I can tell you already, since I've been doing that, the global healing and the weekly healings and asking everybody to join me, the energy is just uh, amplified exponentially. It's really powerful. So um even people who just want to dip their toe in the water and maybe see what this is all about they're welcome exactly. they're welcome they don't have to be a trained healer not everyone is people are all different levels um some very very advanced to totally beginning but um i call it awakening healers because it doesn't matter where you are on that continuum mm -hmm. if you're drawn to it i'm pretty sure that that is your calling mm -hmm. you know whether it's in your own family just providing uh more love and compassion, you know, not being as triggered and ruffled, doing some practices that help you stay balanced and centered and aligned and open up your, uh, to more of your soul aspects. It, it's all there. So um, anybody can do it. And I made it extremely affordable. It's $11 a month for all this. So I made it hopefully so nobody has to say, no, I don't have that. <laughs> um, it's, it's, this is my my give back to, to my community is, uh, and also I know that we're all being held by each other and it's really important not to gather together. So. Absolutely. Yeah. And people can come and, and dip their toe in the water and see what it's all about. You don't have to have a complete life shift and career change like Kamari did. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> you don't have to I, just I don't jump away from the whole career. You can just, yes. Do yeah. not do what I did. Please do not just jump off the bridge and say, Oh, I'm supposed to be a healer. And, leave law and everything. I mean, I don't regret that I did it, but it was a really uh, harsh landing for, for many years. Uh, I did not build a practice. I did not know what I was doing. I just got a calling and I thought, well, when you get a calling, you answer, you know, you, <laughs> you answer. Yes, you did you answer, you know, out of faith. And it was, uh, it was rough going for a while there, but, um, but it, it got me going, but I wouldn't recommend it. So yeah, I try to prepare people a little more for those kind of shifts. <laughs> It doesn't have to be quite so dramatic and difficult. But yeah. Um, yeah, aside from that community, the other thing I want to do again, I, I ran this a while ago because some of my clients were really, really struggling with money 
And of course that's up majorly. And I've always had an issue with money because I always thought over here as being good and spiritual, like very Catholic, you know, and we should be happy to be poor kind of thing, even though my family wasn't poor. It was a mindset that God and money did not mix. And if I was truly spiritual, I wouldn't ever care about money or make any, you know, it was a big divorce within my being. And so I started doing prosperity and abundance work, oh gosh, 30 years ago, because I knew I had to break down some of those concepts within me. And I um, saw my clients going through the same thing. And so I thought, you know, I really want to empower them around abundance because abundance and joy and abundance and God are very close. <laughs> the energy of abundance is very joyful, very happy, very high vibe. It's not like over here, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's very much all in there in that bliss and joy of that spiritual connection. So I started sharing one of my favorite practices, which was chanting. And I thought, People, what people need, which is what I did in, in the ashrams, we did, oh God, by now, thousands and thousands and thousands of hours of spiritual practices. Chanting was a huge one and my favorite one. So I thought I would start doing that with people as well. It's called Claim Your Abundance Chant Challenge. For 33 days, um, we do every day uh, the Lakshmi Stotram, which is a hymn to Mother Lakshmi, who's the goddess of prosperity and abundance. And it said, if you chant once, you get health if you chant twice. I hope I'm getting this right. Um, you get wealth. And if you chant it three times, you get enlightenment. So it's for all spiritual uh, and, and worldly desires. It's aligning you with all that is um, Mother Lakshmi, the goddess of prosperity and abundance, because they're all contained in there. So it was profound um, when we did that. So we're going to run that again on I believe we're starting on Monday, April 20th. We'll start another 33-day chant for prosperity challenge. It's really, really fun. Yeah, and a great time to be kind. And of perfect timing when everybody is freaking out about their money, mm -hmm. you know. And it's good for me too to re <laughs> revisit it. It's it's what I draw on whenever I feel a wobble in my own space. I dive back into chanting. Yeah, I, I'm always doing Reiki, but when I bump it up, it's always chanting because that shifts. Not just me, but the vibration in my environment. It, it's and it's fun, and it's mm -hmm. it's just right there. It's very powerful. So that's what I'm sharing. <laughs> it helps uh, eliminate wobbles. <laughs> yes, it's a wobble eliminator. It's really fast and it's fun, and I, people are just amazed how quickly, you know, everybody's being told to meditate. And I'm not a great meditator. I'm a spiritual teacher who doesn't like meditating. Go go figure. But, you know, the divine feminine is, is the creative aspect of God. So I'll claim that. I have all this creativity going on. So I have so much happening in my brain and my mind. It's all very juicy. But it's really hard to slow that train. Chanting gives me enough focus where I can slow that down. Focusing on the mantras are praise God in a million different names, God and Goddess. And uh, the mantras themselves align with certain chakras and balance our energy field. And before you know it, your mind is empty and, and you didn't have to work at stopping thinking or, you know, so it's, it's a more active, creative process and very joyful. And then you have stillness. So I, I find it that it's like a twofer. Yeah. <laughs> it helps. Right. It helps the meditation. meditation if you will. Yeah. Because I really kind of suck at meditation, <laughs> yeah. which is I'll, crazy. I'll volunteer that one too. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's just not my favorite thing. So there you have it, my, my disclosure. <laughs> it could be these logical minds of ours that we have a hard time with. The, yeah. So. Well, you know, you, uh, there's many spiritual practices, and ideally you, you find the one that works for you, you know. I had a friend who liked to run, and he would get in that zen. You know, you get into bliss. You get that Ananda mind going on a runner's high. You're in a, you're in a trance state. You're in a very... And I got it. I got that, that that was his way. And his wife was saying, oh, no, that's, you got to do this. And you got to, and I'm like, he's doing his, he's on his train and he's finding his joy. Like, let him run. You know, it's working for him. So people have to find their stillness, their way. And um, I'll share my way. And if it's for you, you know, a lot of people don't even know if chanting's for them until they try it and give it a good shot. So 
Yeah, um, that sounds exciting. You also um, have a TV show, right? Is that still happening? Yes, uh, every month we roll out a new episode. It's called Bliss with Kamari TV. It's on Divine Spirit Network. And you can also find the links on my site at kamarihealing.com. And so um, we roll a new one out every, every month. And I think we have about six more months. And it was filmed live. I never wanted to do anything with TV. I'm very shy. But uh, when they said you could film one of your retreats, I said, you mean I can just be teaching? Like be myself? And you'll film it and cut it? And she said, yes. And I went, okay, sign me up. I love to teach. And if it's live, I know I'll be guided in the moments and I don't have to get all, you know, up in my head about it. Right. And so uh, it's, it's been filmed live at, at my events, my, my bliss retreat. So, yeah. that's, so that's another way to kind of get a sense. Yes, that's on my site. Um, every week I share blogs, uh, videos, articles, just uh, in, inspirational ways of thinking and doing and being with energy and all things spiritual so <laughs> that's great well it's been really fun catching up with you Kamari and oh I agree I was really happy when I heard you were doing these interviews yeah. personally just to see yeah just wonderful to things. <laughs> yeah, for sure so thanks so much for joining us and sharing all that's going on with you so mm -hmm. as Kamari mentioned if you want to find out more visit her website at kumarihealing.com you can uh, check out her blog and and her newsletter and all of the great events she has going on so yes. and if, if you need to give her a call it's 772-589-9803 so thanks again oh very welcome thank you for hosting me and have a an amazing wonderful day and um hope to see you a little sooner this time <laughs> next time around all right. All right, everyone. Thanks for Thank joining you. us. Be well. Stay connected.